Hello once again everybody, my name is Eric and we're here today taking a look at the Money.net platform. Last time we uh, took a look at a program, it was the Metastock Zenith, which was sort of a derivative of the Refinitiv Icon platform. Uh, so this is not that, nor is this the Bloomberg Terminal. This is its own little platform called Money.net. And I've known of Money.net for a few years actually. They've been setting out to uh, sort of shake up the whole Bloomberg game. I don't know how they're faring, to be honest with you, but I thought looking at their platform might be worth it. Now, before we go any further, I wanted to tell you that this platform, Money.net, it seems like they've made some changes to the way they operate their business. Uh, it used to be that they had a desktop app. It seems now that their app is entirely web-based, which is fine by me, um, but I'm just throwing that out there. And it also seems like they've sort of separated their business into institutional and uh, retail arms. So if you go with their institutional product or if a company goes with their institutional product, it's referred to as money.net. Um, if you're going for their retail product, it is called Scout. So I thought before we take a look at the platform itself, we can actually look at their website together and you can see um, in more detail what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm just going to pull up their corporate site here, and you can see off the bat, it kind of it really does look like you know a professional financial platform. But we're not here for aesthetics; we're here to find out whether or not this is a viable platform to help you in your financial analysis and/or trading. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, maybe if I just. And let's just go to the pricing. Um, so let me get rid of that. There's a few tiers of um, service for their institutional product. Most of us are not going to be going for the institutional product. So let's just go to Scout, which is sort of their retail arm. And so you can see the feature list here and what you get with each associated package from the bronze to the platinum. I signed up for the platinum. Um, they do offer you a 14 day trial. So you do have to put in a credit card number though, and if you don't want to proceed with the trial or you don't want to proceed with um, the service after the trial period, you can just email them and they'll cancel it for you. And by the way, this is not a sponsored video in any way. I'm, I'm doing this with my own credit card and I did this on my own accord. Um, so obviously the Platinum feature has the most features, as you would expect. It is the most expensive. Um, so I would encourage you to go to money.net slash pricing slash scout uh, if you are interested in learning more about the feature list. That aside, let's go ahead and go into the platform itself. Uh, as I mentioned, it is a web app. I threw it into full screen for the sake of not having the address bar there for distraction. So this is what you get when you sign in. You um, have a few different templates that you can choose from based on what I've seen. And, and by the way, I just want to also mention that I'm not an expert in this platform. I've spent a f couple hours with it so far. Um, I have a pretty good idea of how it works. Um, so if I don't cover something, uh, by all means, let me know. And uh, maybe we'll come back and take a look at it. So we'll take a look at the templates first and foremost. You can see that there's a basic template. Uh, basically has news and all that sort of, you know, thing. Uh, advanced uh, allows you to view multiple markets across several asset classes, an equity view, currency view, crypto view, options, uh, news view, and a completely blank slate, which might be interesting to take a look at uh, if you want to build it from every um, component that they offer. So by default, um, I spend most of my time and most of my trading is in is in the equities market and specifically the U.S. equities market. So this particular view is where I have it uh, set. I did make some adjustments to it, but I haven't played around with it very much. And so this whole platform is is modular in that you can you know move things around into different blocks, and you can add uh, different modules and change things up the way you see fit. And off the bat, you can see that I have a quote grid of just random securities here. Uh, quick chart. You can uh, take a look at the market heat map here, um, which is taking a little while to 
load up. I don't know why. Um, active securities. There is a Symphony chat if you are on the Symphony platform, and that's basically just a finance mes messaging platform. Um, I do not have a Symphony account, so. Uh, we will not be going there. Uh, analyst recommendations, earnings calendar, which for me is is huge. Uh, dividends calendar, which for me is also pretty big. And then of course, uh, streaming news and top news, um, which are very important features to me and I know for many of you as well. So before you jump into a platform like this, you have to ask yourself, what is it exactly that you are looking for? Right, because a lot of people will tell you, well, you just you don't need a platform like this, and I would actually agree with them. A lot of a lot of what these platforms do is aggregation. They take information from all corners of the financial markets and they, you know, throw them into a central hub where you can quickly access them. That's the beauty of Bloomberg. You know, we've we've talked about Bloomberg a lot on this channel, and I've said probably more than once that you know your average retail trader does not need access to a Bloomberg. It's just complete and total overkill. And I would raise to you that that's probably the case with this platform as well. I think the Platinum was, what, $59.99 per month? I mean, that's a fairly good deal for aggregating um, a bunch of information in one spot. That said, obviously, this platform is not as in-depth as Bloomberg is. Um, so, it, you know, you can't even really compare it, and I hesitate to even call it a Bloomberg alternative. Um, but here it is. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the offered modules that um, this platform allows us to take a look at. So it's divided into six categories, quotes and prices, charting, screening, uh, company financials and analysis, news and calendars, social sentiment and analysis, and utility. Uh, it seems like you know these are just different tools. So actually, I really like how they've divided this up into different categories. It lets you find what you're looking for very quickly. Uh, so the quote grid we already have in the back. If you want to add securities into a portfolio monitor, uh, we'll just throw that in here for the sake of, of showing uh, you folks error unable to retrieve portfolios. That's probably because there is no portfolio. I haven't added one. We're going to create a new portfolio. We're going to call it My Port Portfolio. And I suppose we could begin adding securities in here. So we're going to add Burke uh, B shares. We're not, uh, we're not cool enough for Class A shares of Berkshire. Um, what else are we going to add in here? Uh, let's go ahead and add Tesla. I don't know, we'll add Honeywell, Caterpillar, Palantir, Complete Dog. And so that's good enough. You understand you understand where this is going, right? So you can add your securities in here so that when you launch this in the morning or whenever you decide to come here, you can see how your securities are performing. Can you do this in your, your Thinkorswim or whatever platform you're using? Absolutely. You don't need this. But it's here if you want it. Let's see what else they offer here. I'm going to get rid of that market heat map because it's not really doing very much for us right now. So let's take a look at TNS, time and sales. Uh, like I said, I'm going to try and get, actually, I don't know if I said that. We're going to try and get through a lot of these modules, and um, we'll see how long it takes us. So time and sales, pretty descriptive. We'll show you transactions. This is showing 1408. The current time is 1409. So this is, this is real time. Let's just change the security up here. We'll throw in Apple. And you can see time and sales. There's also a little gauge here, uh, which I presume is showing um, sales at the bid versus the ask. And so you can see that Apple is down uh, over 2% today, so there's a lot of selling going on. Interesting. Okay, let's get rid of that. Let's move on. Uh, options chains. I know a lot of you are trading options. 
you can see sort of a similar affair here. And if you want to expand a module, there's a square in the upper right here. You just click it. And uh, you may have to do some fine tuning here to get it to your preference. Oh my goodness, I have no idea what I'm doing. Here we go. There we go. There are your chains, right? And your strikes. So it's basically, if you've looked at an option chain before, you know exactly what this is. Let's proceed. Let's take a look at currencies. Now, currencies is one area where uh, I don't trade very much, but I know a lot of uh, viewers do. And I do apologize because my system is a little bit slow. I've got uh, my messaging platform up, my OMS EMS, um, some database tools running in the background, which I don't want to close out because it is it is 2 p.m. and it's not the uh, close of trading yet. But I did have some time, so that's why I'm doing this video now. Uh, anyway, here are your USD to um, various uh, pairs and you can of course change that to your preference uh, let's see commodity prices this one seems interesting and you can see how it, it will adjust to various size panels here so obviously one of the big things lately has been the price of oil right, which has gone through the roof so you can see WTI right up here and various other commodities um, not quite as aesthetic in my opinion as Bloomberg and I know that's probably going to be very controversial because people rag on Bloomberg all the time for looking like it's out of the 1980s and I I really like that look but um, some other folks um, particularly folks that I know I uh, hate it, but to each his own. Okay, let's take a look at uh, yield curves. All right. You have the 1, 3, and 6 month, 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, and 10, and 20, and 30 curves. So this is useful. This is actually, this seems like it's changed a bit since the last time I looked at this. Um, a few years ago. So as I go through this, you know, a lot. This is my first time looking at a lot of these different modules. So it's also helpful for me, which is the reason why I started to do Bloomberg videos in the first place. Was I thought, you know, it'd be a good, a good idea to record going through it and exploring various functions. And I know that a lot of folks don't have access to Bloomberg, and so they would be interested in that as well. Chart grid, obviously this will let you to adjust columns and grids of charts if you're a chart person. Um, this might be for you. I think there are probably much better tools out there for charting. Um, it's like Bloomberg, you know, I never, ever, ever used Bloomberg for charting, really. Um, let's see what the strategy builder shows. Strat builder. And I'm actually really kind of happy about the fact that, you know, if this looks interesting to you, you know, you can go ahead and sign up for a 14-day trial and try it for yourself. You know, unlike Bloomberg, you know, it's not very easy to get your hands on Bloomberg unless you're working in the industry or maybe you have access to a business school that might have a Bloomberg lab. So this is various categories and kind of help you build. It looks like it's a trade idea generator. Um, great. Tech Insight. Uh, 
Um, let's click around in here. Let's actually make this bigger and see if there's anything interesting. Technical insight, stocks and ETFs. Okay, so this will let us fine tune. Okay, so this is interesting. So this is basically like a technical analysis uh, pattern finder, a trend finder. And I know a lot of you are trading based on technical analysis. Which is fine, I do the same thing in, in a portion of my portfolio. Uh, let's take a look at double bottom. Intermediate term bullish. Okay, so we'll provide you with um, various companies. Let's see what happens when we click on it. Will it show us? Yeah, it will show us the, um, the pattern there. That is very cool. Very interesting. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this because you understand surely what um, what that's getting at. Let's see what else is offered. So that's that's definitely cool. That may be uh, colored orange because it's part of the uh, more premium package. Do keep that in mind. So if you get the cheapest cheapest one, you may not get that. Most active we have back here. So it looks like this is being sorted by percentage change. And that's always useful to see which stocks are moving uh, on a daily basis. Uh, heat map, I think we had that back here too, but it wasn't showing us earlier. So let's try it again. Heat map is always something I appreciate and look at to understand what sectors are, are hot and which sectors are not. Um, you can see that tech obviously not having a good day, um, whereas you know sort of the financial names today are, are perhaps not doing great but are certainly stronger. So that's always useful to look at that uh, at the beginning of a session or in the middle of a session, sort of get your bearings and understand, okay, this is the kind of market that we're dealing with today specifically. And you know that that may be able to help you with trade idea generation and and sort of understanding what's coming up in the next few sessions ahead. Uh, unusual option activity. Um, this is this is particularly useful, obviously, to those who are speculating in options. I've never been one to chase unusual option activities. Um, frankly, I don't really care what big funds and whales are doing with their options. A lot of times they're just hedging positions, so I, I'm not going to read the tea leaves there. Um, if that's something that you want to do, um, I wish you the best. Uh, let's, say, let's see, crypto market cap. So, the last time I made a video on crypto, I mean, things have really sort of um, blown up in the industry. You know, I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that you know a lot of different companies are really sort of getting serious about crypto and, and crypto offerings for their clients, which is great, I guess, um, especially if you're trading these markets. Um, so there's something here for you as well if you are in the uh, crypto uh, financial scene. And then you can see that this is uh, market caps uh, 735 billion for Bitcoin. And if I'm going through too fast on anything here, uh, you know, that's on purpose, but if you want to see something in greater detail, please let me know, shoot me an email or leave a comment. We will um, do our best to come back and, and look at these things, or I can just e answer your email if you think it's something that wouldn't be useful to other folks. I, I do prefer if you would leave a comment that way you know, if someone has a similar question, it will be answered right there and then. Let's take a look at panoramic view. Uh, I don't know what this is. Oh, let's blow that up. It's very small. Uh, panoramic view. Fundamentals. So it looks like this is sorting on both fundamentals and technicals. Okay, so this is cool. So this is taking several things into account. It's taking uh, new sentiment, technicals, and fundamentals, which is interesting. 
So this might be something that's of use to you. Uh, let's just take a look at something. If I click there, what happens? Very cool. Very cool. And if you see things lag here and there, um, I, I don't think that's because the website is clunky. I think it's because um, my computer's being a little bit of a potato, and I've got a lot of things running on it. Let's move on. Okay, so now we are um, we are in the company financials and analysis. This is where Bloomberg really shines, right? So they they have all the financial data and all everything you want to know about a specific company. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at. Um, We've already taken a look at the panoramic view. Let's go ahead and go to the tier sheet, which um, we'll just pop over here, I guess. We'll actually make it bigger. So if we want to change the security, uh, we'll do that here. We'll change it to Tesla. It'll provide us with suggestions, which is always welcome. Uh, we have an overview with a chart and a description. So this is kind of like the DES page on uh, Bloomberg. And then we're presented with the financials, your income, balance, and cash flow. And by the way, there is also an Excel integration into this platform. So if you want to take this data and throw it into Excel, that is possible. And I know that's huge, huge for a lot of financial analysis, analysts, rather. Um, this just chucked me into Edgar. And I don't know how to get back. Oh, okay. I threw it into a different tab. Okay. So you had the SEC filings, and then you have news, obviously. So going through this right now, I have to tell you, I'm actually really impressed with um, this offering as far as it's concerned for uh, retail users. I think this is actually tremendously useful. So we took a look at uh, the tier sheet, which also included the financials. Let's just make sure we didn't miss anything there. Yeah, so it's basically, you know, similar thing. You can adjust for years. Uh, let's see, how far back can we go? Am I asking for too much here? So it looks like we're taken back through 2016. Some of you may have had, that, have had that question. And you can see that there is various tabs. If I plop it into a similar um, space on the grid, it'll show up as, ver as, as you know two different tabs or three different tabs, however many you throw in there. All right, let's get rid of that. We're going to come to analyst recommendations. I know a lot of people pay attention to analyst recommendations, and one of the things that I really hated about the last platform we looked at, which was um, Metastock Zenith, was that they did not provide you with a whole lot of information on analyst ratings. Uh, you'd get sort of a, a target range based on the average of what the analysts were, were saying, but there wouldn't be an analyst name or what, what firm they were with or what their rating was. So it was really kind of like uh, obfuscated. And so here I like that even at 60 bucks a month, you have the, the ratings for um, a particular security and you have the, the name of the person and which firm they're with. And it, it also looks like there's a little bit of a platform, I mean a, a profile for each analyst and their success rate. So I think this is really awesome right here. This alone might make the cost of this on a monthly basis worth it for somebody who, um, you know, integrates analyst price targets into their uh, buy and sell decisions. Very cool. Uh, let's just take a look at a different stock here. Actually, you know what? Not Palantir. Not Palantir. 
Tesla. So you can see the analyst price target, 1068. Lots of coverage on this particular security, of course. And obviously, analysts are pretty bullish here, right? 15 buys, 6 sells, 7 holds. Interesting. Cool. And not to get too distracted here, but at the top, you can actually you can change these um, securities and indices to whatever you prefer. So let's just throw Tesla up there uh, to remind us how much the price has fallen. I'm just kidding. It's only 4% today. All right, moving on. Uh, earnings and estimates. Actually, before we get there, let's take a look at corporate actions. Uh, for me personally, this is kind of a big deal. So right off the bat, you have several different filters that you can apply. So if I'm interested in learning about the earnings for uh, Apple, we can just check that off. And we can see that the last earnings was in January. They have not yet announced their next uh, earnings call, um, but you, you'll be able to see it there. And, and various other corporate actions, by the way. Earnings and estimates. Let's just make that larger. Okay, so these are just various um, estimates here with a chart with the uh, earnings per share reported and the price overlay. Pretty good. Earnings history. can see estimated versus reported. Um, pretty self-explanatory. You can adjust for annuals or quarterly, whatever you prefer. And I'm actually going to leave this on full screen for now. And then ETF holdings. This, this seems um, quite useful as well. This is something that I personally like to look at. So let's throw in the cues here. Oh my gosh, this computer's being very slow right now. I might actually have to close some programs out. Um, here are the cues, and it shows you how each particular security is weighted accordingly. I don't think this was in Metastock Zenith, so big ups to um, money.net slash scout for including this, at least in this package. And I'm judging, I'm guessing by the fact that this is not in premium yellow, that this is probably available on all of the uh, packages. Market buzz. Okay, all right. So it's assigning various scores based on, I presume, new sentiment. Okay, got it. Wow. Okay. Just clicking through here, folks, showing you what's going on. I don't know why it's cut off there, but... Okay. Yeah, I don't think that's something I would ever use, but it's there. Speed News Desk. The Speed News Desk component is not available at your subscription level. Okay, so this is probably for the institutional package. Um, never mind then. Uh, top news, streaming news. You obviously you know, know what this is. It was on the lower left-hand corner of the main page. 
So this would be like the top uh, function in Bloomberg, right? And then the streaming news would be like, I think, I think it's NH. Um, economic insight. TC Economic Insight, okay. So it's loading in the information. Um, okay, so I've actually, I, I've had to cut out a little bit, um, and I've been waiting here for about five minutes. I closed out. Uh, came back and it's just not loading in the data so I don't know if they're having issues with this part of the service right now uh, unfortunately I cannot really show you this which is a bummer because this looks like it would be tremendously useful let me close out of that as well okay um, Earnings calendar, this seems pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we all know, I think we actually looked at that earlier. Uh, IPO calendar, if you're someone who likes to trade IPOs, here's what's coming up. Many of these uh, even on uh, foreign exchanges. Corp calendar, uh, we've already kind of looked at that. Um, should show us Okay, this is this maybe a little bit different because it includes uh, mergers and uh, name changes and takeovers and things like that. So that's also pretty useful. Financial broadcasts. And also there's a squawk on here if you're somebody who likes um, squawk callouts. I don't know who does it exactly. I haven't heard any since I've launched it this afternoon. Um, but it is there. Okay, cool. So you can tune into various channels here. Um, I don't know what this is on the screen here. That might be just my browser freaking out. Uh, but you can watch news if you want. Cool. Uh, and so social sentiment and analysis, my guess is this is part of the super premium cool kid package. Stock trends powered by chatter quant. GameStop. Okay, historical social data for GameStop. Let's take a look at Palantir. This, everyone hates Palantir, myself included, so, you know the sentiment here is it probably can't get any lower <laughs> alright this is cool not something I would use but you might you might find some appeal in it if you um, are into that sort of thing trending cryptos uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum there I answered the question uh, most popular stocks okay so I'm guessing that it's aggregating a lot of these things from the Wall Street Bets subreddit, perhaps. Uh, most popular cryptos, uh, stock alerts feed. Okay. I'm just going to click on one of these so you can see what it what's there and again I'm guessing this is my browser freaking out so please disregard that it's really annoying me but I don't want to close out of it now uh, crypto alert scout chat symphony chat uh, you have your Excel add-in right um, I noticed that when I logged in it asked me what platform I wanted to use um, if I wanted to use like the Excel add-in, this. Let's just see if it is actually available here. Yeah, you have to download it. Okay, I'm not gonna do that. Um, for the purposes of this video, maybe 
you know, in, in a different video, perhaps, but uh, not this one. So you have MATLAB, and then you have uh, your clock if you want to keep track of various time zones. This is this this works out better if you're you know throwing it in a module, right? So if you're making it like up there, you can adjust the size so that you can see the time in whatever markets you're trading. That's your call. And then alerts. Um, if you want to set price alerts or Actually, it looks like it'll make a voice call or SMS. Let's well, just uh, simple trailing price news. Okay, all right. Voice call on, SMS on. That's cool. Um, I want to come back to the economic insight because I really don't want to end this video without showing that. Um, because it's so useful, but I just don't know if it's going to load in. But anyway, this feature is really cool because it'll show you sort of the economic events that are taking place. It's like the um, the eco calendar on the Bloomberg terminal. Um, it'll show you things like you know the FOMC minutes and and all the other corporate uh, or economic events, you know, the, the unemployment, uh, job loss claims, et cetera, et cetera. So I think, you know, this being a topical look at the platform, it actually has most of the things I personally would look for and need. Um, and I think at a fairly reasonable price. Again, we're talking, you know, I think it was, what, 12 to $60 per month, something like that. Um, so I think this is pretty useful. Um, to somebody who doesn't have access to a Bloomberg terminal but wants a lot of the conveniences. Again, refer to what I said earlier in the video, um, the level of data you're getting on this platform is nowhere near what you're going to get on Bloomberg, so it's not even worth, you know, it's like comparing apples and oranges, but if you're somebody who's trading the market or investing or doing some sort of financial analysis, I don't think this is a bad deal at all. I really don't. So uh, we've been going at it for a little bit here. Uh, I think I'm going to end this video here. If there is more interest in this platform, I'm happy to show you some more. Uh, until then, I wish you good luck with your trading. And I am working on some uh, other videos uh, relating to trading and not necessarily to software, uh, which I hope to have out in the next few weeks. So we'll see you then, and I hope you have a uh, wonderful day.